This morning I had this dream and in the dream I was in a living room of a house that I've never been in before, but needless to say there were family members there and I only remember one of them and this particular person's a believer. And this particular believer was busy doing something like making dinner and or or lunch, I don't know, making a meal. And in the dream, I began talking to her and, and, and explaining to her what's happening on September 26th and 27th and how I believe that that could be the Daniel 927 covenant that's signed and how if that's the case, then we have to be gone before that. And I was talking about how um, there was something that Trump just signed uh, the other day, I think, uh, that has to do with the dividing of Israel. And I was tying it in with the Abraham Accords that had started a while back, like last year or the year before, the date escapes me. But, and, and she started to explain why she didn't believe that, oh, that's not the covenant because of something, something, but she couldn't, she couldn't finish because she was interrupted. So all of a sudden, I think this might have been what interrupted her, but I'm not 100% sure. But all I remember is shortly after that, I heard a loud shofar blast outside. And my ears perked up and I was so excited. And it was something like, I don't know if I'm going to get the exact pitch correct, but it was like, Ooh, and it was like, Ooh, so it was kind of like that. It sounded more like a shofar than a trumpet. So I ran to the back door. I opened it up. I was looking at the sky. And in the dream, it was it was daytime, which is weird because usually it's nighttime in my dreams. And I heard it again. And all of a sudden I said, Jesus! Like I was so excited. But the other people in the house, as far as I could tell, were not excited. Like they, they it was like they didn't even care. And I don't remember who else was in the dream, but... I was just like, oh, I heard I heard maybe like three to five trumpet blasts I, or shofar blasts. I don't know if they were, um, if there was just three, if there were five, but I, you know, I just thought about like when I woke up, how there's so many people in the body of Christ. And perhaps if I'm getting the interpretation right, perhaps the family represents brothers and sisters in Christ. There's a lot of them that are not excited about the return of Jesus. And that part grieves my heart. But the fact that he gave me a dream with multiple shofar blasts, I've never heard a shofar in a dream before. I've heard some, like, I, I heard some back in 2020 at like 4.44 in the morning outside. They were faint, but I heard them. And there was another one I heard at the mall, like about, um, I think two months ago, I want to say. But I've never had them in a dream. And the fact that there's multiples, I just believe that that's a wake-up call and it is a warning. I don't know if it's a certain number of days. Like, I, I'm not sure. But I know that this week is super high watch because of things that are coming together. We know that there's supposed to be um, a change in the economic system come, you know, September 30th into October 1st. We know uh, we're supposed to go cash potentially by the end of this month. And we have the five red heifers that were verified by a rabbi. I learned that off of Watch Woman 65's channel um, that are ready for the third temple, which doesn't have to be built now. It can be built during the tribulation because the sacrifices don't need to be done right now. They need to be done later in the tribulation. So that is all just, it's so exciting. My eyes are peeled for the Lord. I can't wait. And a lot of you feel the same way. And I also, you know, the Holy Spirit prompted me to remember the time I woke up. And the time I woke up after that dream was 618. And that means to receive like it means to receive to oneself i have to get the definitions in my phone and i can't get it right now but look it up in strong's means to receive 618 and it also means storehouse and we are his grain harvest so i asked the lord when the rapture would be i said have you got a date you know i thought i'll she i'll I'll, uh, I'll be cheeky, you know, and I'll ask him, <laughs> well, when's the rapture, Lord? Give us a date, you know, one of them. And he, he didn't answer me. He, he completely ignored the question, never said a word. And then I said, okay, okay, you probably won't answer this, but how many people are going to be raptured? And he answered me. 
he said 11 at 10% of 11% and that was it and I'm like I'm like this in my dream I'm scratching my head I'm like 10% of 11% of what number <laughs> and I was like Lord what what number and he repeated it again 10% of 11% but it was more stern as if to say don't ask me again <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like okay I'm sorry and then I woke up out of my dream if my understanding of what is said in this clip is correct only 10% of those who are alive and who believe in Jesus as being the son of God will be taken from the earth in the rapture while 90% of those who call themselves Christians will remain behind to discover that they had no oil in their lamps and that they relied in part on what they did for God to save them, instead of placing 100% of their trust in Jesus for their salvation, or that they did not fear God as they should have. According to this word that our brother Lee received, only 11% of the world's living population are Christian, and only 10% of that 11% will be taken in the rapture. That relates to about 90 million people that are alive on the earth today, which is really just a drop in the ocean. So I threw up a little prayer, okay? Now, I remember every word of this prayer, because I think it's now inscribed on my DNA, as are the next two minutes of my life. Uh, and the prayer was this, God, because I didn't call him Father at that time, I just felt it was too casual for me, coming from the background, the depravity I lived in, into the kingdom of God. I didn't feel like I had the right yet to call him Father. Now, that was wrong, of course. I should have called him Father from day one, but that's just that was my mindset. That's, that's where I was. So I said, God, do I fear you enough? In Christ's name, amen. Now, the moment I said men in amen, not one step later, not two steps later, when I came to in my head, amen. The ground around me suddenly got blindingly white. You couldn't see anything. It also got incredibly loud because the tree I was walking under was just struck by lightning. And I, I grew up in Texas and with a couple of years in Oklahoma. I, I'm used to lightning, but I've never seen the light from lightning and the sound of lightning at the same time. It's always been you see the light, you see the bolt, then you wait a couple of seconds and then comes the clap as the sound catches up to the speed of light. Well, I was at ground zero and I heard them both at the same time. I never saw the bolt coming because it came down right on top of me. But I was in a panic. I, I didn't know what had just happened. And when I say that that lightning was loud, Okay, I once in the 70s went to a Grand Funk Railroad concert, and I had to walk out of the arena because it was hurting my ears. That has always been number one on Stan's list of loud things. Well, the Grand Funk Railroad concert got demoted to the second place on that list because that lightning explosion was even louder. And I was disoriented. I was confused. I was shell-shocked. I wasn't, that was the last thing in the world I expected. I didn't know what was going on. And the first thing that came into my mind was, you're going to die. You are going to die. How did you get yourself in this situation? And, and I panicked. I, I, I thought, if I'm going to save myself, I didn't know what was going on. I got to get in that hotel. So I took off running. Now, running in that heat in August in Houston, that's, you know, no easy feat. But I was also hauling with me, you know, because I just had dinner, I was hauling with me a complete Christie's fried seafood platter. And I had upgraded the French fries for $2 more to a loaded baked potato. So I'm hauling that with me. Now, in a, you know, a radius of a few miles, everybody in Houston, in that area, heard that lightning. And it was rush hour traffic, so I'm sure a whole bunch of people's heads snapped up and they looked up in the sky and thought, where did that come from? Because there wasn't a single threatening cloud above Houston. And, and the people along Westheimer Road in stop-and-go traffic, I bet a bunch of them saw that lightning bolt hit. And more than one carload saw me running. you panic running. I just hope I wasn't waving my arms and screaming in a high-pitched voice. I don't think so. I, I think it was a fairly manly panic run, but it was a panic run. 
And I'm sure a few people said, see that guy running? He was under the tree that just got struck by lightning. I hope he's okay. Is that blood on his shirt? No, it's cocktail sauce. It's just cocktail sauce. So I just ran and ran. Finally, when I got within a half block, my wits started coming back to me and I realized there's no more lightning. There's no thunder. There's no rain. Sky is still blue. The clouds are still puffy white. What happened? Go inside the lobby and, you know, it's business as usual in there and I'm starting to feel safe for the first time. And I asked myself, what just happened? So I, I relived the, the situation, walked out of Christie's, walked by the Blockbuster video, waved at the security guard, and thought about Jay Vernon McGee show, said a prayer to God, uh, God, do I, do I fear you ain't enough? And then I realized he threw a lightning bolt at me. I asked him, do I fear you enough? And his response was to throw a lightning bolt at me as if to say, oh, I don't know, Stan, you tell me. Do you fear me enough? And I, and I was mad. I got so mad, I mean to tell you, I was mad for a week and a half. I went up to my room and I angry watched the Olympics, the opening night Olympics at Beijing. I mean, I just sat there with my arms folded in bed, chewing on my lip. I couldn't believe it. I asked a simple question. Do I fear you enough? And he throws a lightning bolt at me. That was his answer. Almost killed me. Could have killed me. What I should have been thinking about was, yeah, it should have killed you. But how I lived through it, how I was not damaged at all physically by it, is, is another question. Because when the ground around you starts lighting up from the lightning that's coming, you're too close. You're too close. Something bad should happen, but nothing bad did. And instead of being all stubbed up, I should have been grateful that I wasn't a story on the local 10 o'clock news because that could easily have happened. Uh, strange lightning came out of the sky in the Galleria area early this evening, surprising commuters. But for one man visiting our town, he was simply at the wrong place at the wrong time and was walking under the tree the lightning struck. Paramedics pronounced him dead at the site. Later, an autopsy would reveal that his last meal consisted of two fried shrimp, one fried scallop, some unidentifiable piece of fish that was also deep fried, hush puppies, and a loaded baked potato. But I didn't. But I didn't die. But a lot of people do die each and every year uh, from lightning strikes, and a lot of people are injured. Just last week, three people died in Washington, D.C., and one was seriously injured. But he made his point. He made his point to me. He gave me an instant answer to my prayer. Do I fear you enough? The answer is always going to be no. You can ask him if you want, but I'm telling you from experience, the answer is going to be no. I don't care how much of an elevated sense of fear of God you have. It ain't enough. It ain't enough. Now, as I look back on that story, I think it's hilarious now. I think it's the funniest thing that's ever happened to me. It, 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 serious, too. It was serious. I just hope that he told some angels ahead of time because, it, you know, it was too funny for just me and a few people along Westheimer Road to witness. I hope he told some angels Friday night, be in the Galleria area around 630. Watch for a guy going past the Blockbuster video because he's about to ask me if he fears me enough. And I think you'll find my response highly amusing. And it was. It was. And so what I learned that first year is, he is both incredibly trustworthy and faithful, incredibly powerful. And there's no way to describe the fear of God in, in a human metaphor. I've heard it described as, well, it's like if you were in the fourth grade and you had a teacher you really respect, really respected, but you didn't want to get on their bad side. No, that's not the fear of God. Here's what the fear of God is. It, everything was going good. I had plans of dessert being brought up by room service as I watched the opening day Olympics and our team carrying the American flag. All of that changed. And when the half hour of silence in heaven is over, it's all going to change for the world. Right now is the time to come to God. And you can only come to God through the Son of God. Oh, but that doesn't seem fair. As long as you have that, as long as you think your sense of justice is better than his, you're not coming into the kingdom of God. When you're ready to put that aside, like I did in December 2007, for the first time maybe in my life, 
I went to him, and this time I didn't have accusations. I didn't have questions. I had a need, and the need was him. That's still available, and you should grab it. It is the most valuable thing you'll ever grab in your life. Thanks for watching. I want to share with you the gospel, the good news of salvation in Jesus Christ. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, the apostle Paul defines the gospel as this, that Jesus Christ was crucified, that he was buried, and that he rose again on the third day, defeating death, paying in full for the sins of all mankind. That's the gospel. That's the good news. Now, how do you respond to the gospel? It's ABC simple, known as the ABCs of salvation. The A is for admit or acknowledge that you're a sinner, that you've fallen short of God's perfect standard of righteousness. Romans 3.10 says, there is no one righteous, not even one. Romans 3.23 says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And Romans 6.23 says, for the wages of sin is death, the death penalty, which Jesus came and paid for instead of us. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The B is for believe in your heart. This is Romans 10, 9 and 10. It says, if you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. And then the C is for call upon the name of the Lord or confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and that God raised him from the dead. This is Romans 10, 9 and 10, which also says, if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. And lastly, Romans 10, 13 says, all who call upon the name of the Lord will be be saved. If you've never called upon the name of the Lord, I implore you today before you leave this beautiful church today to do so. If you're watching online, I implore you, do not put this off. We are at the end. The time is at hand. Please stand. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I thank you so much Lord, I thank you for telling us in your word very specifically what the world is going to look like and be like at the time of the end. Because as we look around, it is very clear, without question really, that it's exactly as you said it would be. Lord, I pray for anyone who is weary discouraged, longing for your return, that you would encourage and strengthen their hearts. And just as a reminder to them, would you, as only you can, fill them afresh with this hope that no matter what they go through, you're going to get them through it until you come. And for those who have never called upon you, Lord, I pray that today it would be the day of their salvation as we all long for and anticipate our wedding day to you, Jesus, as our bridegroom. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.